Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is living up their quarantine life the best way you can. In my last video, you watched me take you through the steps of transforming this black and beautiful wig into a very rich and deep dark red, all while allowing and helping you learn from my mistakes. In this video, however, we're taking it back a few steps and I'll be showing you how I constructed the same exact unit and I'll take you through every single phase of constructing a closure wig on a sewing machine. But before we get started, if you like this video and you want to see the different steps I take when constructing a frontal unit, then hit that like button down below and let's try to get this to at least 500 likes. Is that cool? Okay, with all of that being said, let's get started. Firstly, you will be needing a dome or mesh wig cap. I prefer mesh because it is breathable one, and most importantly, it allows you to see through the cap, and this really, really comes in handy, especially when you're working with a sewing machine. You'll see exactly what I mean by that as we move along the video. You will also be needing a platinum or metallic Sharpie to map out where you will be sewing your wefts down. I learned this trick from Tailored Crown on Instagram, but before I knew any of this, I was using a pink or white or a really, really bright eye or lip pencil from the beauty supply. It's a much cheaper route and it also gets the job done. So if you watched my how to make a closure wig by hand of course video, um, then you picked up on this trick but the same applies to a machine sewn unit. So I don't do any measuring like ear to ear, perimeter, any of that. The only measurements that I really really care about is front to back to make sure that my units fit well and I aim for about 14 to 15 inches. This is pretty standard in my opinion. None of my clients have yet to complain about the fitting. Speaking of clients however, if you would like to have a wig constructed, styled, colored, anything you want by yours truly, then click the link down below to order your custom unit. Everything will be down below, so check it out. So here I am placing this closure on, making sure that it is flat and secure for when I sew it down, and then I proceed to braiding up the hair to keep it out of the way. So yes, I do hand sew the closure down, but these are the only stitches that I make by hand. A few people, and by a few people I mean two, <laughs> they've asked what needle and thread I use, and this is the J shape needle. I've used the straight one before. I've used the round C-shaped curved one before and honestly I just prefer this one way more. If you use a straight needle to make a wig, first of all you're crazy and you need to seek medical attention like today. Seriously. But the thread that I use is pretty basic hair thread that I get from the beauty supply. To sew the closure down, I secure the first two stitches with knots by looping the thread around the needle three times then pulling it right through. Then I continue by just doing simple stitches all the way through with no knots at all. I do this for the closure because I want the seams to remain as flat as possible. We don't want any bumpy wigs around here, right? But as soon as I'm done, I close everything off the same way I started by knotting the last two stitches and then I cut my thread. Now onto the important part of this video. This is your blueprint, your GPS, your maps, no Google. This is literally what is going to make or break your wig. So here we will be outlining where the wefts are going to be sewn onto. And I promise you this may seem super easy at first, but it all has to be well calculated for how many bundles you have and whether or not you will be single or double wefting some of your bundles. I'll get into the different criterias in a bit, but today I'll be showing you how I create my blueprint for three bundles with these lengths. So as you can see, the spacings are about two finger widths apart. I do this because I like to stick to double wefting my bundles. It's far less work than single wefting every single bundle. And also with this far of a spacing, it contributes to a very flat unit. So in this video, I did a total of six in the back and on top or in the front, I did about four lines. The fourth line being the perimeter of the closure. So you can't forget that because that is where we will be putting our last track. You will also want to make sure that the line before the perimeter of the closure is not too close or crowding the closure because again we don't want to walk around with thick bulky wigs on our heads I mean at least I don't so onto the sewing portion of this video this is my current sewing machine nothing too fancy for my stats I keep my tension at four my needle position in the middle my width is at four sometimes I can take it to five my length is at four and lastly this is the stitching pattern that I like to work with for wigs the first thing we're going to be doing is sewing our wefts together in short I'm basically just double wefting. So your bundles already come folded in half before they are rolled up. So that part is already done for you. Also 
when doubling my wefts, I like to start on the folded side. This step is pretty easy. You're, you're basically just sewing the tracks side by side. And as I'm doing so, I'm pinching them together for extra security. Do not, and I repeat, do not overlap them or place them on top of each other so that one can lay right under the other. You want to make sure that you're taking as many steps as possible to ensure that you have a pretty flat unit. Quick, quick, quick disclaimer. Although this video is beginner friendly, I am making this with the assumption that you already know how to work a sewing machine. If you don't and you want to learn how to use one, there are plenty of videos on YouTube where they will show you the ins and outs of working a sewing machine. My focus here is simply how to construct a wig. That's it. So this is what your track should look like after you're done doubling your wefts. Peep how they are not overlapping and they are not on top of each other. One is laying right below the other. Moving on, I do this to two out of my three bundles and by the third bundle, I'm able to analyze how many lines I have left and then make a decision to whether or not I wanna double weft or single weft the last bundle. So for the second bundle, I'm giving it to y'all in a different angle. This way, there is no excuse as to why you are not understanding what I am doing here. Again, I am starting at the folded side I'm positioning it on my needle then I am reversing a few times to secure the stitch and then I begin sewing until I get all the way down remember I am pinching them together and holding my wefts down so that there is no room whatsoever for the wefts to move around also I'm really really sorry if this went out of focus but you can kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here I'm simply just finishing out the weft and I'm securing it by reversing multiple times here is a look at the second bundle and like I said before I don't go ahead and double weft the third bundle until I have an idea of how many lines are left after I've sewn both bundles onto the wig cap. Moving along, we're now going to start sewing the wefts onto the cap. If you haven't done this already, now is a good time to cut this part of the wig cap off. By doing this, the cap isn't as constricted and it gives you just a little bit more room to move around on the sewing machine. And to sew my bundles on, I simply just start by lining up the weft to the little blueprint that I've created. Basically, these lines are the guide to making the entire unit. So I'm going to start by securing the stitch by reversing a couple times and then just continue to sew it all the way through. With this step, please make sure that you're taking your time. I know that you may have seen many videos of people saying that they make it under 30 minutes or so, which is all very true and very, very possible, but you do not want that to be your goal as a beginner. With time, of course, you can aim for that, but your main goal as you're starting should be constructing a unit effectively with little to no mistakes. When I first started sewing on a sewing machine about a year and a half ago, it honestly would take me about two hours to make an entire wig, and I was completely okay with that. But now I'm down to about 30 minutes to 40 minutes depending on how many bundles. So like for real, take your time, like seriously. Also, make sure that as you're sewing, you're constantly checking to make sure that you're laying your weft on your blueprint bit by bit. You also want to make sure that you are not sewing on top of anything else. This can be such a rookie mistake. Trust me, I've done it. But again, this is why I love the mesh cap so much because I'm able to see through the cap to avoid sewing on any other parts. But if you do happen to have this accident, which can happen to the best of us, it's good to have this stitch remover handy so that you can erase any errors. This is also better than using scissors because it is so tightly stitched. And with scissors, you can cut up the cap or the bundle easily, which can lead to another problem that you do not wanna deal with. So make sure that you do have these stitch removers handy. They're so inexpensive. So I highly, highly, highly suggest that you get one, especially if you're a beginner. Like I said before, this is beginner friendly, but with the assumption that you already know the basics and the ins and outs of working a machine, if you don't, baby, please do not play yourself. Please do not play yourself. Get you some old fabric, practice your stitches, and learn how to work a sewing machine with control. I'm not saying this to discourage you, but this looks easier than it actually is. So don't say that Lex did or Lex said that, mm -mm, I want to hear it. Do not ruin your $200 plus bundles going at this blindly. I promise you will not be happy with yourself. So please practice some stitches first. Please learn how to use a machine with control. And then you can for sure go ahead and start working on a wig. So by the time I got finished with my first two bundles, I decided that the best thing for me to do was to single weft my last bundle so I do not run out. And that is what I did until I got to the very top. Regardless of if I double weft or single weft the last bundle, my very last track where the closure is, is always single weft. I'll repeat this again. Regardless of if I double weft or single weft my last bundle, my very last track 
where the closure is, is always single wefted. I do this to ensure a flat unit. This is where the stitch remover can come in handy again so that if you have a double wefted piece, you can just take it apart with the stitch remover and then single weft the last track. So I sew this part down, making sure that the weft is right next to the closure but not overlapping. We still want a flat unit. But once I'm done with that, I just cut the extra piece off and that's it. You have completed your brand new wig. So with this clip, you can see that even though the lines were pretty spaced out, it did not result in a see-through wig. I know some of y'all were thinking it. Mm-hmm. I read y'all's minds. And then it being spaced apart definitely aided in making sure that our wig remains flat, flat. It is 2020. Please, please do not walk around with helmets on your heads, please. So make sure those tracks are not too close to each other. That is what makes a bulky wig, especially at the top. Before you can start styling, be sure to remove any loose thread that you didn't cut off yet. And if you would like to see how I transformed this unit by taking you guys through the entire process, all while helping you learn from my mistakes, then head over to the video right before this one. And I know this was a lot to take in you guys, but I hope you paid attention and took some notes especially. Show some love down below if you haven't already. Stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you guys in my next one.